deck. Kirk is away. Kirk is away. Copy. Kirk is past the transom. Copy. Copy. Yep, zero reps. And deck, Atalanta's in the water. Copy that. This is an audio slate for a dive. Hotel 1954. UTC time is 1928. Mark at 50. Mark. Change over to dive. Go ahead, Bridge. Yeah, we can hold position. 
Thank you. Great. Okay, we got our tracking. Hmm. Hmm. What's the hum? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Why is this so green? Hmm. <laughs> Stop. There's a lot of questioning going on in the front row. Okay. <laughs> Turn on the mezzo. Oh, 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 ha, ha. I know why. <laughs> not, a, not a ground fault. Great, not a ground fault, Roger. What'd you figure out? Had to push the button. Great. This button. The hidden button. Roger, hidden button. That is not very impressive. Taking it from here. Yeah. Can I hear about that? Oh, that's the uh, the <laughs> cone off the slurp. What? <laughs> See, uh... <laughs> huh. Have a new layout here. <laughs> oh, we've commented on your layout there. <laughs> Which minus? That minus button or that minus button? You shouldn't have given him a new button display if you didn't want him to press all the buttons too many times. You can't, you can't. Sorry, what? Well, you're not keeping up with me. What the heck? That's on you, man. That's on you, man. Flat stick. You're 13. 13, that's all you got. You got 13. 
But the important thing is, what does the fish do? <laughs> <laughs> and Robert would like to request googly eyes on this one. Yes. This is not you? This is Jonathan? Oh. So how many cameras are on right now? No, how many cameras oh, are on now the... Now you're outrunning me. Oh my god. How many cameras are on the vehicle right now? Just the one. Rider. Is it on the light bar? Yeah. Yeah. Copy. Okay. Yeah. Who's controlling the sexton cam? Negative. Who's controlling the camera on the porch? Science. Roger. Okay, so science, what are we doing on this dive? Uh, yeah, so we are exploring uh, unnamed Gio 123. We're on the northwest side, or north, northwest of Kingman Reef. I think we're on the west side of this feature. We're hoping to go to about 2,400 meters and see what we find. Yeah, I think this needs to be a back row item, <laughs> and not loading the front row with additional. <laughs> You want it to be a nav function? I think that's a science thing. I think we need to see what we're pointed at, but yeah. For our folks at home, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned, send us in your questions. And if you missed our previous dives, check out nautiluslive.org for our highlights. More highlights will be posted uh, throughout the week. I think we need to like start prioritizing what displays we have here. Like if we can get rid of that, you know, and yeah, like, like rapidly or it's just, yeah, but it like gets down to like three, right?
Tá bem? Are we okay with the res? Oh, what is that? Well, it's because it's turned off. <laughs> I don't even think that's it. Yeah, see it's, this is wrong. This is incorrect. I believe it's on this button. See how it freezes up? And then when we hit that, it goes live again. This is wrong. Get that? This is the oil res return. This is not. That's a spare. Or wait, that's interesting. It stopped again. Huh. Look, now it's live. And then we turn that off. And now it's not. Isn't that interesting? I think if you turn both these off, I bet it goes to 11. What? So, TJ, I can't just keep balancing this out because you have the winch control. So I'm. Uh, So it seems these are tied together. Need both of these on to get the hydraulic comp level. I don't have to look at the schematic. Unfortunately, that part of the schematic is also the, the penciled in section. Or your, yeah, the analog page, the two the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a little bit of ground fault in there, not significantly bad. Yeah, we just have a bunch of small ground faults adding up.
So these spares were like on the pan and tilt feedback? Do you find the oil res? I think you're right there though. Yeah. Oh, and then you ate it? Yuck. <laughs> Do you know where that's been? <laughs> Yeah, so HPU temp is in there too, and this is not indicating that, right? Sorry about that. Well, when we're ready, why don't we go ahead and start with our introductions, 8 to 12. Introductions and your favorite movie, it could be a trilogy to a movie series. Um, hi everyone, I'm Jules. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, I am a biologist here on the Nautilus and I have to say the Harry Potter movies oh. are still a favorite. Harry Potter, okay, okay. Hi everyone, my name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. I'm sitting in for Adam for a little bit. Um, and my favorite movie, I like anything Pixar, but oh, I really like, um, I really well, like Coco. We're gonna have to look at the... Well, hi everyone. My name is Paola. I am this watch data logger. And as for favorite movies, I don't know if that changes almost weekly, but last, like in the last couple of days, I'm guessing before coming to the ship, I've been seeing Madagascar. I like that movie. It's very funny. Great movie. Yeah. <laughs> Madagascar. Oh, Madagascar. Oh, King Julian. Okay. But the first one, the other ones are. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I love those movies. It's really good. I like to move it, move it. <laughs> okay, well, um, hello, 
everybody. My name is Annie Halleck. I am a science communication fellow. This is my first year sailing with the Nautilus. I am from Pango Pango, American Samoa. I'm an educator at our local high school, home of the Mighty Sharks back home. So my favorite movie, well, movie trilogy series is um, The Lord of the Rings. A any work with Tolkien is, I love, is amazing. Let's go. All right, let's go to our awesome front row. Samantha. Hey, I'm going to go first this oh. time. Dave's going to <laughs> <laughs> Dave Robertson, lead video engineer, uh, sitting in the video seat, uh, running cameras and making sure everything gets recorded. Uh, favorite movie? Wow, there's so many. Uh, I'm going to go with the Blues Brothers. Because I'm old. TJ, you're up. Ah, no worries. Okay. Samantha, why don't you take it? Sure. Uh, hello, Samantha Wishnack, uh, Navigator, uh, also Ocean Exploration Trust, uh, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. I'm also the operations coordinator on shore um, through the year. Uh, from the Salinas Monterey area of California, Central Coast. And uh, I've actually been reading the book series that um, the movie Master and Commander is based on, which I really love. Um, oh, I read all those. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, I, I'm like reading the book in chunks, but uh, I like loved the movies. There's like 30 of them, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. So, <laughs> well, there's the first three that, um, that were the. Yeah, I read all those. That's a yeah. Lot of, that's a there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, but they go to the Galapagos in the movie, which is awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, Robert Waters on the Hurt pilot. I'm OET's uh, facilities manager and ROV engineer. I'm in Los Angeles. And I think I also like Lord of the Rings series. Oh, let's go. Maybe the Big Lebowski. <laughs> 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 yeah. Good answer. Very good. Uh, hi, everybody. My name's uh, TJ. I'm from the southwest of Ireland. Uh, Adeline, the pilot on board. And uh, yeah, I have to agree with uh, Robert there. The Big Lebowski is uh, definitely uh, <laughs> up there on the on the list. Shoot, thank you. Um, I do. Dave, you mentioned um, what was your movie? Blues Brothers. What? what, what? I'm sorry, I've never heard. Wow. Oh what my! <laughs> I've oh never my. heard. I'm in, like, what? What is it about? A brief summary, please. Uh, <laughs> a brief summary. Uh, it uh, came out of a character sketch that uh, happened on the early, the first generation Saturday Night Live uh, with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, uh, and they uh, put together a band uh, and then turned that into a tour and then turned that into a movie. Uh, ah, it's about okay. uh, two guys that uh, are trying to uh, save the Catholic school that they went to, uh, and, they, and hilarity ensues. There's, there's a lot going on there. It's okay. from uh, 1980. Right, right. It's John Landis. I'm looking over here. It's the John director. Landis ah, movie. okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm asking, and then um, you have TJ and Robert. Like, who did you? What did you guys say? The Big Lebowski. Yes. Can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How does one explain the yeah. Big Lebowski? I think there's only one thing you can say: the dude abides. Yeah, the dude the divides. Yeah. Yeah. And the he really divides. likes his rug. Yeah. <laughs> Puts the place, it, it, it tied uh, the ties the place together. Tied the whole place together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, okay, for everyone tuning in online, our depth is about 2,400 meters. Current oxygen level is our live. Uh, oxygen level is at about 23.6. I think this is in micromolars per liter. Okay, thank you. It says like percentage. We have viewers that are disappointed that no one chose the abyss. 
I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Nor do I. And there are 21 books in the Aubrey Martin Turin series. Wow. How many? 24? 21. 21. Oh. Maybe we should uh, see if we have this movie available for movie night. Right. 2,400? We do have the yes. 21 books in the series. The knock off uh, Pirates of the Caribbean That's movie. Not right. We have that here? Yeah, Clear. what was it? Something. Oh, uh, I have no idea. Something about that. sand. Hold on. An hour and a half to go. Roger, hour and a half to the seafloor. So we'll be on bottom 11.30, right for lunch. So do they have the hardcover on board of the series? Uh, I'm reading it on Kindle. I don't know if it's on board. Uh, Actually, no, okay. I think Mike is also reading it. The series that from Master and Commander, you have a hardcover? I think we actually might have a paperback of one of them on board. Oh. <laughs> Atlantis has a whole hardback series, it, like takes up a whole shelf. <laughs> We do have an extensive library for anyone looking for a book, uh, both ocean-related, nonfiction, fiction, and uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> for our folks at home, um, if you're just tuning in, if you missed our previous dives, we have our highlights that are now on nautiluslive.org. We will continue to post highlights after each dive. Um, looking forward to next week. Um, stay tuned and please send us your questions. Look at this fabulous DC ground fault number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's something to be proud of there. <laughs> so, Annie, what's your favorite oh, ocean themed movie? Oh, Around ocean themed ocean. movie? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, no, no, that no. is a good question. I'm over it. Oh, I forgot. It's good. Look, we're good. Ocean themed movie. It's turned on. I don't know if this counts as ocean themed, but it is Hawaiian on. themed. Whole nine at yards. least. But it's Lilo and Stitch. Uh, oh, that's a good what one. What a great movie. I, a great movie. Oh, no, no, I, I have these, these the okay name. Oh, no, I, I know what I want to okay. say, but I'm trying to. I forgot the name of the movie. They actually like they a, seem to remember. Kind of like a classic. I'm them. trying to look for it. Ooh, Life of Pi is really good. Oh, yeah. I, I cried at the Jason end. Mavericks. That's a good one. What is it? Chasing Mavericks. That's one of my favorites. Oh, really oh yeah, yeah Waterworld. Oh my God, what's the one? It's like Water Man's everything's good. Yes. Waterworld Water World. is you know, <laughs> all good. Waterworld is my favorite. Oh, yeah, I grew up watching really? that movie with my dad. So Aww. I haven't seen it. Going back to Disney, that. Luca is amazing. Moana is amazing. Ooh. Um, Looking forward to the remake. Moana remake? Is there a remake? They're they're open. It's a uh, cast open casting call <gasps> for oh. Moana. So, is it like a live action or they're just it's a it's it? a live action. Oh, cool. That would be so cool. Does oh, anyone remember? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on the Ocean Team movies, they have Ocean Eleven. That's <laughs> not it. I mean, they're not wrong. That's the last guy's last name, I think. Danny. Uh, yeah, Danny Ocean. Danny Ocean. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's played by Frank Sinatra. Wow. But <laughs> it doesn't have to do anything with the ocean. Also, Whale Rider, which is. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. The movie from uh, New Zealand. I'm going to give it more beans here. That one's a great movie. Right. Really? I agree. A little bit. Highly recommend. More beans. More beans it is. I don't know if anybody remember. Yep. I don't know if you guys know uh, Johnny Lingo, the no. legend of Johnny Lingo. It's a Pacific oh. Island movie too. It's ocean themed. Ooh. I'm going to write all of these recommendations. <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like when you're like, "What's your favorite movie?" It's like, "Oh, like 
it could be like I have like a very clear answer, but it's like favorite ocean theme movie. There's just so many. There's so right. Many. There's so many good ones. I take back what I said before. All of these movies are my favorite <laughs> movies. What was the one you said? Johnny. Yeah, The Legend of Johnny Lingo. It's a really good story. Let me look. I think a lot of our viewers from New Zealand would know this one. Yep. Why is the last song listed under ocean themed movie? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the Life Aquatic with Steve. Don't know Zisu. how to pronounce. Zisu. Zisu. <laughs> <laughs> We have a new viewer. Um, well, welcome. So, our, our chat says, I was wondering on your opinions of the Magna Pina Big Fin Squid, since not much is known. Sorry, I, I do not know. I have no opinions. Yeah. I have no clue what that is. Uh, no thoughts on the no matter. Thoughts. Apologies. Unfortunately. Uh, but I will Google it yep. and yep. form an opinion. It's thought to be the deepest occurring squid genus. But there's only been 20 recorded encounters. Oh, wow. 20? Mm -hmm. From the past 20 years. Wow. Which is why uh, 20 years ago is when it was first documented. My new opinion is that it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah. Hopefully there are future encounters. Yeah. Thanks for uh, teaching us about something new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a weird looking squid. Is that the one? Yeah. Oh, wow. What? It's like a spider squid. Yeah. Looks like most of the sightings have been in the Atlantic. Hmm. Mm. All of the sightings, or have oh. there been any in the Pacific? Most of them so far. Oh no, there we go, Pacific too. Okay. It was only identified in the in like twenty years ago. Wow, Whoa. not that long ago. So how big is this thing? It says about 21 feet. Oh, 21 feet? What? Uh, a person who uh, was remotely operating an oil company vehicle said, quote, my reaction was to jump out of my chair and start yelling profanities because I knew it was something really different. Okay. Oh, Iman, wow. Your moon pool light's really bright. 
staring at your moon pool like moon pool. Better. Um, we have chat. One of our viewers. They got a backlighted shark. Saying best ocean movie ever, Jaws. Yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't seen Jaws. No. Oh, what? You haven't? No. Jaws. Is that's the, I feel like that's the movie that really just traumatized a lot of people. <laughs> it yeah, I know it kind of painted a, a picture about yeah, traumatized a lot of people. And I remember watching it it's and not being able dirty. to finish it as a child wow. because, like, I got like a little bit too spooked, and I was like, I don't even want to go in the ocean it's like anymore. These joysticks. Um, it gave sharks a bad rap. Yeah, I know. That's but then right. I that's moved. I moved uh, across the country because I come from California, so I moved uh, to New England for grad school. Yeah, I mean, sequencing will give us the most information. Yeah, we have a silly question for mm, the team. Um, so. Did any, if you were able to catch one of these little, those little shrimps that are seen and made it to the surface, has anyone ever cooked one compared to commercial, <laughs> commercial <laughs> shrimp we eat? Thanks. Uh, I will not be eating any <laughs> deep sea <laughs> shrimp. Yeah, I don't really want to know what would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, they're so cute when they're swimming. Yeah, People they eat deep sea fish, apparently. Uh, shrimp? I don't know. I don't know anybody who's ever done that. Oh. This far deep, though? It would have uh, to be like some sort of scientist. Yeah. 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 Or really expensive shrimp. <laughs> Seriously. $10 million equipment to catch a shrimp. <laughs> Yeah, don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't taste very good. That's not based on anything other than the fact that it's like from the deep sea. I don't know. It's just <laughs> a feeling. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I feel like they're smaller than commercial shrimp, but also I like really haven't been paying attention. Maybe I should do that next time I see one. For everyone listening, the lasers are spaced 10 centimeters apart, so you can measure the shrimp, compare them with the shrimp you have in your freezer, or your fridge, or whatever. Yeah. I heard at in one expedition they put a whole steak and then put it in a bag and then they Oh, put it down. What? Yeah, put they it down. They sent it down? Yeah, they sent it happened? down. Did it explode? No, they to tenderize it. Yeah. Oh. oh and then right. they brought it back up, and then they <laughs> drilled it. Apparently it was fine, but nothing to write home about. Huh. Oh, okay. It's pretty neat. Yeah. How far down? Uh, I don't remember. It was on Brian's expedition, and Adam is back. So I'll leave you guys. See you guys on my Thanks. shift, four to eight. Bye, Stay Carly. Today. Awesome having you. Thanks, guys. Can you, can you, <laughs> do you want to create that chart for us with our headshots? Yeah, now that we're more clear on the rules. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we can change it now that we've, um, <laughs> there is a, a, a bet of sorts, not a bet. Competition. 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 Uh, between Adam, Corley, Corley and I, um, whoever misses a day at the gym first has to do an interaction in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. So... Adam claims he wasn't clear on the rules, and <laughs> we'll give him a pass this time. I, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop there. We'll restart.
Haven't found the bottom yet, huh? No. Have not, not yet. We're about halfway there. Yep. How long is the trip to the bottom? How long what? Oh, I'm just reading. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm not used to having this screen here, so I love seeing oh, the I love reading now. the comments. It's so <laughs> fun. I think we'll get to the bottom in about 11.30. What are your opinions on the discovery of human trash in the Marianas Trench? Marianas Trench. Trench. Um, it's Sad. really upsetting, but it, it just shows you like how pervasive um, plastic and human litter in general is. Yeah. It's in everything. It's everywhere. I like that a lot of people have started calling this the Anthropocene. What's that? It's like, you know, time periods in geologic history, and they're kind of defined by major changes in environment or major disasters or whatnot. Okay. And, uh, and when we look back at the geologic record of this time period, we're going to see a lot of human impact. It also goes to show that um, you can have an impact just by um, being responsible in your own backyard. So. Right. Right, but let's not let major corporations off the hook that are mostly responsible for this impact. <laughs> I was trying to be hopeful. <laughs> in one of the Okeanos expedition, they found a treadmill in the bottom of the ocean. What? what? Yeah. Yourself. Who well, trying to donate <laughs> it to the fish? Like, oh my gosh! I've seen uh, crazy. a toilet. A toilet. Yeah. Right. A Feliz cumpleaños mylar balloon on a hydrothermal vent. <laughs> wow. Uh, lots of beer bottles. Yeah. On lots of tires too. Tires. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A, this far away from any sort of human activity though it's we haven't seen anything on this cruise yeah yeah which i'm really happy about yeah and when you consider like how slow chemical processes are at the bottom of the ocean and the deep sea like this stuff's going to be around for a long long time yeah and it may not be the visible trash it may be the yeah. change in you know, sea surface temperatures that that influence global ocean circulation or yeah. change the chemistry of the the bottom water. You know, and microplastics. And microplastics, but that, yeah, I think those are not as that's not a ocean problem. That's a planet problem. It's in the yeah. air. It's in the dirt. It's in our food. It's like. It's but it everywhere. is. Yeah, well, it's an everywhere problem, but also in like just corals specifically like microplastics can oh, clog like, up there yeah basically prevent them from feeding um like uh make like photosynthesis less efficient if that mm -hmm. makes sense for those of you who are just tuned in this is a 24 hour dive duration max depth 2400 meters I like the people that just say hi. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, we have not seen any trashes this expedition so far. Hopefully we won't see any. Oh my god, I hate how the screen moves. What is that? <laughs> what screen? When when she scrolls on there, look what it does. Wait, scroll down. Ooh. Oh. Ghosty. It's just that computer here is fine. Yeah. Sorry.
Oh, yeah. Adam, you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, and hi. Your, and your favorite movie or movie oh. series. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, so I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a professor at University of Rhode Island and director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, uh, which through NOAA sponsors this expedition. Uh, my research is in submarine volcanoes, mostly. And my favorite movie is Strange Brew. Strange Brew? Yeah, it's a adaptation of Hamlet by Bob and Doug McKenzie, Rick Moranis, and I can't remember the name of the other guy. Ah. Oh. Request. Directed by Rick and Dave, yeah? <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. New movies to watch. And then we have a question. What is a GEO? For those of you have new viewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a GEO is a, a flat-topped seamount. Um, and so if you look at a map of this area of the ocean, you'll see a lot of these flat-topped seamounts. They have their volcanoes that, like the islands of Hawaii, rose up above the sea surface. And then over time, as, uh, as waves eroded them, they started to become flatter and flatter. And once they were just beginning to submerge, they turned into atolls, so small islands with, with usually like a fringing reef around them right. and then they sank well below the sea surface these are you know top out at 1500 meters or so below the sea surface so they've subsided quite a bit from uh, yeah. when they were at sea level and you can see around these seamounts you can see some smaller volcanic features that never reached the sea surface and they have you know kind of they're kind of peaked or conical um, and so they didn't have that same uh, kind of period of erosion. So seamounts are, well, seamounts have not, like, they didn't break the surface yet. They're still... Um, a seamount, I think, generally speaking, is just a bump on the seafloor. Ah, okay. And uh, so even if it's flat-topped like these geo, they're still considered seamounts. But okay. at one point, yeah, they were islands. But there's a kind of mechanistic progression from seamount to island to atoll to geo. geo. Because a lot of the um, the diagrams that I've seen in local high schools, they don't have, they only go from like volcanic barrier fringing and then atoll, but there's no mm. geo. I think it would be great to have a geo mm. as the last because yeah. I, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, is the majority of the ocean floor made from basalt? Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, basalt is the most common rock type on the surface of the planet. I mean, minus the water. Um, so, basically, mid-ocean ridges uh, form it at divergent plate boundaries where the plates are spreading apart from each other and as the plates spread apart mantle rock rises up beneath them and begins to melt and the melting of that mantle produces basalts and then it uh, then it kind of covers the seafloor and that's what we have all the way across the ocean. One of our random commenters, commenters said seamounts have to be a thousand meters tall hey, Allison. from the seafloor. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Allison Fundus, the chief operating officer of Ocean Exploration Trust and a volcanologist in her own right. Let's go. But also like uh, ocean educator, science communicator, like haven't found something that Allison can't do. <laughs> <laughs> and then chat 
is also asking, the white dots you can see sort of swimming, what are they? Plankton, and small fish, or marine snow? Can you guys um, elaborate on marine snow? Yeah, um, it could be a little bit of all of the above, but mm. I'd say primarily marine snow, which is organic matter falling um, from surface waters uh, down through the water column. Some of it, or maybe all of it really, uh, eventually reaching the deep sea. Um, and that's how carbon is transported from the surface of the ocean throughout the water column um, as animals at the surface um, eat other things and poop and die and microbes uh, play a key role in this process as well. Yeah. So eat, eat, poop, and die. Eat, I think poop, that's and a die. <laughs> Cycle of life. the humor of a <laughs> sixth grader. <laughs> There's definitely some swimmers in this, though. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a few floaty things. What depth are we at? Oh, I think we're at 1,500, somewhere around there. Almost, almost 1,500. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So We're a lot of the plankton will live shallower. So the kind yeah. of like the plant life needs sunlight. And down here, we're not getting any. So um, and the the animal plankton, what do we call these two? So plankton and phytoplankton. Phytoplankton and plankton, right. So the plankton eats so the phytoplankton. Plankton and But there are a lot of organisms that just, this is their home in the midwater. A lot of yeah. jellies and say fauna fours and fish. There's an entire layer of midwater uh, called the, the ocean twilight zone or the scattering layer. And it's this like thick layer, I guess, of <laughs> Um, of marine organisms that um, migrate up and down through the water column every day. Yeah, it's so it's so dense with biology that you can see it acoustically. So you can yeah. shoot a some sound down into the water, and it'll um, bounce off that that layer, and you can see kind of where it is and how dense it is, and sometimes even what's there based on how it responds to different frequencies of sound. So cool. Oh, this is an interesting question. Um, has the ocean o ocean always been salty? And if it was not, would we have anywhere near the amount of sea life that we have now? Shout out to Andrew from the UK. Well, we certainly wouldn't have the, like it would affect ocean mixing and circulations um, and different gradients. Um, it also prevents having salty water prevents things from fully freezing over. Right. Um, yeah. Do you want to say more about It's pretty much always been salty. But the, there yeah. was a cool uh, but incorrect hypothesis back in the day that we could tell how old the earth was by how salty oh, wow. the ocean is. And the idea was that the ocean is salty, but fresh water is input into the ocean. So it must have started very salty and getting less salty th through time. And through mm -hmm. that, they tried to figure out how old the earth was. That's not how it works, though. The you know salt in the ocean comes from, it, you know, it's conserved as, as as water, ocean water evaporates, it leaves saltier water behind, or as ocean water freezes, it leaves salty, saltier water behind. Um, and even as fresh water is added, it reacts with rocks in the ocean crust and, and dissolves salts out of them. So um, it's not a one-way street from salty to unsalty or from not salty to salty. It's more of an equilibrium 
state. Right. And it turns out that even the oceans on uh, other planetary bodies are salty as well. So on the icy moons of Saturn, wow. where we've been able to see the water, uh, it is, it's salt water, like similar salinity to our ocean. going on in the front row? <laughs> front row is... Yeah, uh, you want to join a party? I feel left Try out. We're <laughs> I don't know. We're uh, talking through the descent and how it differs from previous descents on how speed based on current. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 for Robert, who's not an SPL, he says, it's fine. Uh. It is fine. Uh, it's fine. Don't panic. Yeah, it's fine. Just hitting some current on the way down. And we're not in a orientation that we normally are. Upside down? We are completely stable. You can say these words to the good people yourself if you'd like. I don't know. <laughs> Robert, you, you have piloted Alvin where you can pitch the vehicle. Yeah. And sometimes that actually helps on descent to like push you towards whatever target you have on the bottom. Yep. Is there any ROVs that that can that have that sort of capability? Yeah. I don't think they bother because you have horsepower. You know, like Alvin, you're trying to conserve battery power, so you don't want to be driving, mm -hmm. right? Like if Alvin had lots more battery power, they could just drive up and down and. So ROVs don't have kind of pitch capability. I haven't seen one that has that. I mean, we can sort of move weights around like before the dive if yeah. we think we need to have more pitch down, but not during the dive. No science ROVs have that capability. Yeah, so probably, yeah, probably some science. industry ones that have, you know, they're massive vehicles that can do all kinds of crazy things. 200 horsepower stands on his nose. Yeah. Oh, then we have a question. Will Hercules ever be equipped with hydrophones, or has it ever been? Oof. We, we have had hydrophone on board, but oh. the problem with Hercules, it's a hydraulic vehicle, so it has a big hydraulic motor that runs continuously, and it's really loud. You've heard when we started up on deck, and it makes a big humming sound? Yeah. Yeah, so it's oh. constantly doing that. So if you have a hydrophone, that's all oh. you hear. But we've deployed, like, uh, self-contained hydrophones on the bottom and then drove away from them, and that was to capture the sound of some... Uh, methane bubbling that was happening. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna be deploying hydrophones on some uh, Nautilus cruises in the coming year on a on a lander system, Ooh. and so you can listen for methane bubbles would be in the category of geophony sounds produced by the Earth and then there's uh, biophony, which is sounds produced by biology. So it's very, uh, become a, a kind of routine measurement in shallow water, like coral reefs. You can hear how healthy they are pretty right. much by the sounds wow. that get produced. Uh, but we don't know much about the soundscape of the deep sea. Yeah, we're doing a study about that in Puerto Rico in our coral really? restoration. And the sounds are so different, like from wow. a healthy reef to a degraded reef. Really? Yes. Huh. You can hear the parrotfish 
Yes, one. those are the loudest Aww. ones. Yeah. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, there's a shrimp that goes, has like a snipping sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can knock out little organisms. Is that the mantis speed. shrimp? Yeah, a sort of mantis shrimp. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I had one in my fish tank at home, and it, it was quite annoying because it would, <laughs> it would snap <laughs> its claws all the time. And it would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very loud. So we had a hydrophone on the on that Jason cruise with the volcano. You could hear the, the oh, wow. rumbling of the volcano. Yeah, I had a hydrophone on the Alvin cruise where we were uh, sampling popping rocks. Oh to, yeah, to try, right. try and see if we could hear them, but we just heard hydraulic so noise. So yeah. with the use of hydrophones, like what what is there something specific that you're hoping to hear or in the upcoming use of them? Yeah, or even previously. Yeah, well, usually you're, yeah, you're, because they measure at different frequencies, you kind of tune the, f the, or pick the hydrophone frequency that, you know, you want to hear. So some are really good for hearing whale calls. Wow. Some are really good for hearing ship noise. But what we'll want, we'll be looking for is kind of noise from biology or sound produced by biology in the deep sea. Thank you. Cool. Huh? So I have an update on the salinity question. Um, <laughs> according to NASA, the ocean is becoming saltier, actually. Um, and this will affect the specific heat capacity of the ocean, so the ability of the oceans to absorb heat. Uh, this is significant because the oceans absorb a lot of warming, basically, right. um, and keep our climate cooler. Um, and it's also gonna affect uh, the, yeah, deep sea currents and the, the cycling of water in the ocean. Yeah, you see like the, the temperature of the seawater at depth stays pretty constant. Yeah. And that's because of the buoyancy of the the warmer water. Right? Yep. Why yeah. Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? What? I wasn't saying it wrong. <laughs> no, but you're looking at me like I was the one asking you the question. <laughs> um Sam, did you want to ask a question? Samantha, did you want to ask a question? Sure, Robert. <laughs> What, what topic would you like me to ask a question about? I don't know. Uh, I'll take <laughs> famous <laughs> atoms for 400. for 400. Famous what? Atoms for 400. Atoms? Atoms. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm going to pass on that Is one. Is that a first or last name? It could be either. John Adams. John, John Quincy Adams. Adams. Have you ever taken Adam, this Adam famous Sandler. Adam, on a sub dive? Sam yeah. Adams. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, he's been in a submarine with me. Yep. Uh, probably a couple of times, right? Probably, yeah. Any interesting findings? <laughs> oh. No, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> the same thing happens at the end of the dive. I'm like, let's just get one more, one more <laughs> one rock. One more rock. <laughs> and did I? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, spiciest uh, dive you've been on where you're like, ooh, things aren't going well? Oh, spicy. Don't, don't answer yeah. that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can't answer it? Well, all okay. right. As long as it's... Where things aren't going well. In a, like, you know, like... Well, it could like, be... Like, like driving towards the... Mechanical lava. or interpersonal. Yeah. Oh, well, No, I meant we mechanical. Talk. We can't talk Mechanical or, like, driving towards lava. Like, that was an exciting story. What about story. weather? Sure. We haven't had a weather story from you yet. Huh. We almost had to spend the night. In the sub? Yeah. Yikes. Where was that? Gulf that of Mexico. That was the Gulf of Mexico. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's scary. Without a doubt, that's always the one where you're like, looks good, and then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the squalls, you know, the, you get those squalls that roll along there, and I mean, like here we get a squall, but it doesn't seem like they're very uh, strong compared to the regular background, right? Yeah. But there, 
you get these intense rainstorms and the waves that kick up like all of a sudden and then they usually just roll on by but except they, when they don't when they don't <laughs> <laughs> and i was on the bottom and one came in and it didn't go away oh was that a nighttime recovery did that end up yeah with a night yeah it was, it was the roughest recovery we ever did yikes so we're on the bottom and and Bruce called down and said, hey, this uh, weather's kind of kicked up and it hasn't passed yet. So maybe you ought to conserve power and just kind of hang out for a while. And That's not what you want to hear. It's yeah. not what you want to hear. Yeah, and then it kept like that. And the, look at the time. It's just ticking by and it's going to be at dark pretty soon. What's the maximum duration? Oh, it sub can be down for yeah. three days, but you'd never. You don't want to. No, no. Yeah. So, so they made a decision to recover, and it was blowing like 40 knots. Oof. Wow. Eight foot seas, and the submarine doesn't ride that great on no, the surface. No, I was going <laughs> to say, man, there, there was some lunches Unhappy that came inside, back yeah. <laughs> during yeah. that. Oof. Not that time, though. Really? There was no, yeah, there was no lunch launching. But <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely hanging on for dear life, though. <laughs> Bouncing around. We lost the science basket. It fell off. Yikes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was hanging by the, the lines. But we happen to have the best swimmers. Uh, yeah, our two top swimmers. So they handled it well. And yeah, they got back aboard. <laughs> and here you are. Yeah, we don't have the same kind of uh, problems when Hercules needs to stay down longer. Yeah. What's our maximum duration? Five days? No. Four. That's, I unlimited. think that's a, what we, well, it's not unlimited. No. Uh, because he does, he, we need to like look at it once yeah. in a while because you don't really know all the things that can be going on. Uh, but you could hang out if in you the midwater yeah. for a while. Well, I mean, just, just from the, the operationally, operationally, yeah. you yeah. want to look at the ROV. You don't yeah, want to like course. leave it down there and not know all the things that could be going on. Right. So you want to get it up and inspect it. What's our longest dive? Seventy something hours. Something like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Seventy-five, seventy-nine. Actually, we did have Argus uh, in for ninety something hours for us when Argus was doing side scan for um, looking for the Samoan Clipper plane wreck. Yeah, wow. those are the kind of dives where, yeah, like side scan surveys and stuff. We've done that with, uh, with Woods Hole's done it for probably 15 days at a whack. Yeah. Like just mowing the lawn with the. Our this number's not changed. I was about to say, our, our time has not changed. Yeah. We're still going down, but. Yeah. Are we just getting current now coming straight up at us? That uh, doesn't make no. any sense. No, we're, we're going down. Yeah. I don't know. The number, I mean, the seconds are changing. Oh, minutes are changing, too. It's just very slow. I mean, we're only going down at 14 or so. Okay. Are you saying time slows down on the 8 to 12 watch? Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> it just... The watch with many names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah the, the water gets colder and denser, and then so you're more buoyant, so, you, so driving down slows up as you get deeper. So in the submarine, you start out going up fast, and then when you get close to the surface, it's like the brakes go on. And you, you can actually like come up and then like s just sit at like 10 meters depth. Huh. Because you've lost all your yeah. Your oomph. Mm -hmm. And they're going to drive up the last bit or blow a little air in. It's very bulky, right? A lot of drag. Yeah. yeah. And then um, has Nautilus, from chat, has Nautilus Live ever done manned dives? Uh, we don't have any manned vehicles. Mm. So. Maybe that'll change in the future, but we don't right. have any right now. Yeah, it might not make for great telepresence if you're not right. connected to the, to 
of a ship. Unless you had multiple vehicles. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Right? Yeah, watch the human-occupied vehicle with the ROV. Yeah. That'd be pretty neat. Although they generally don't like to dive human-occupied vehicles with a line in the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. could have multiple submarines so yeah I've done that with the uh, 2,000 meter rated yeah subs I was down with uh, we were down with uh, Natil we did face to face we could see the other pilots and the other vehicles. really yeah <laughs> was okay that's kind of freaky when yeah. was that uh, probably 1999 ish Wow. Yeah. And then they picked up and did a nice graceful spin and drove off. And we got up and like clunk, 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 <laughs> clunk, because we didn't have a forward lateral thruster back then. Uh. Mm. <laughs> so we couldn't pirouette. I had one dive in Nautil. The coolest thing about that sub is the air circulation system has, it blows the, the air that's gone over the CO2 scrubber blows out right onto the viewports, so you never get any condensation on them. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. That's kind of a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. I thought you were going to say it was the champagne they have with lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they that sub, at least at the time, had two pilots and one observer. Right. Both of them spoke French, and I did not. So it was a lot of <laughs> pointing and pantomiming and stuff uh. like that. <laughs> Front row shenanigans. You want to share, Samantha? <laughs> Anything you want to share with the class? Robert's trying to go faster. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Oh my God. Trying to go slower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going what I'm going. I'm just Robert's backseat yeah. driving Atlanta <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, science, what are we doing when we get there? Um, explore. We're going to continue taking geological samples, um, barrow manganese nodules may be sampled. Um, sampling characteristic species of the site. Um, so, you know, things that sort of define the, the biology in the area, uh, mainly corals and sponges. This could be interesting because we'll be deeper than we've been yeah. on, on at least the last couple dives. So um, organisms may be fewer further between, but they may be different than what we have been seeing. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And then we're going to take some sediment cores and some eDNA samples. Anything you'd like to accomplish when we're down there, Samantha? Uh, hit uh, hit the waypoints. And let's <laughs> hit the waypoints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let's let's take a little look at uh, our plan while we're descending. Looks like we are landing. A bit of a valley area, and then we'll head up waypoint two, up and over a little knoll. Looks like we're going to do an up and down series of little knolls here. Yeah, and, and if we don't like the look of the downhill, we can just kind of zoom off into the blue and slowly work our way down, back down to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, it looks like kind of a terraced, terraced drive track. Perfect. 
Although we won't have a lot of time on the bottom. We'll get it nice and set up for uh, the 12 to 4. Yep. <laughs> Which is unusual, right? We usually do all the stuff. I know, we usually do all the good the, stuff. The, the cleanup. Are we being too generous? Should we just stop here? And <laughs> <laughs> That's why Robert's going so slow. <laughs> Has there ever been like a ship garden of some sorts? A with what? Plants? A ship garden? A ship garden? Oh, Samantha's room's got uh, some plants <laughs> in it. Really? I have yeah. some uh, some herbs. I have mint, lavender, and thyme growing right now. What? Yeah. That's really cool. Well, along the lines um, we from chat, have you ever considered having like a boat hamster or lizard? <laughs> because that would be cute. <laughs> I can't imagine. I had a saltwater aquarium in my room on the Atlantis. What? Are you serious? Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. With things collected while at sea? Unfortunately, yeah. Oh my gosh. Unfortunately. No, well, yeah, because people would get things out of the seawater strainer and throw them in my aquarium and like, what? you know, we would eat the <laughs> oh corals and stuff. It was like... It was not good. Wow. <laughs> I did not appreciate that. Throw some <laughs> random crab in there. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, ships used to have cats on them. I just what? don't know that that's... Can we bring that back? I don't know that would be a good life for a cat, but... I mean, they had them to catch rats and stuff. I don't know. I feel like it would get a lot of attention. Yeah. It would be spoiled. It would be Very. spoiled. Very. Uh. And Get like it. it would see the deep uh. sea, and not that many uh -oh. cats get to see the deep sea, probably. <laughs> That's true. You've got so your if I were a cat, I'd here. be like, "Yeah, this is awesome." I'm not even using it. One hundred percent. That's all she's got. <laughs> all beans. Uh, give this guy something to do. There's two of them, like they're like multiplying up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant you. Give you something to do. <laughs> what were you doing with the arm earlier? Oh, you don't have Dan to answer was that. <laughs> <laughs> Dan was Did in I my just ear. See the arm, like pop into the screen. He, we were looking at how much. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, delay in the in the latency latency right that's the word i was looking for yeah was that the end with of the, the new okay. with the new cameras you know like I so see. that was the concern because cool you know some of these camera systems like there's a lot of data and you end up with latency and then trying to do things like manipulating or driving and there's a delay in the picture it like messes with your mind and you can't yeah. do it it's just like video games right mm -hmm. you know the video gamers want like, like down like you know a couple milliseconds but okay <laughs> aloha to our friends from Kauai and the netherlands thanks for tuning in Hey, Dave. I Is everyone else hearing the uh, interaction happening? Okay, great. Well, it's good information about the RVs, but... I think this is a good bio question. Could we get an example of what would be biologically uncharacteristic? Wow, there's a lot going on here. Uncharacteristic. <laughs> uh, like if we were to see something new, something we hadn't seen before, I mean, that would also be worth sampling. That's right. the other thing is, you know, making new discoveries. But, um, you know, we we want both. We want things that we haven't seen before and we want things that define an area like in the last dive I was on in my last watch, um, we were seeing 
tons of plexorids. Um, and I was talking earlier about how the taxonomy is being revised. Um, and so that's something of interest. Um, we also want to compare the same species at different depths and in different locations. And so right. it's important to, you know, to have those samples to compare. And many times we'll see We're coming to a screeching halt here. an organism that we've seen at shallower depths at deeper depths. And that's important too, to know the kind of range that that organism lives yeah. in. Yeah. And giant squid. And giant squid. <laughs> and giant squid. <laughs> yeah. I guess we really are handing over uh, to the next watch on the bottom. Oh boy. <clears throat> it's been steadily just getting slower and slower. Water temp is pretty low. Uh, salinity is yeah. displayed where? Two and a half. What was it? Yesterday it was, I mean, we were, there you go. we were at 1,500 meters. It was 3.5 or something like that. 34.6. Can't hear you. Still can't hear you. <laughs> now all you hear Thanks is... Thanks for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> All I hear is Irish. <laughs> <laughs> now you now you've scared him off SPL again. It was time to ask him questions. TJ, how's it been driving uh, at Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. TJ, how about SPL? <laughs> well, you know, this is great. How we, we have Irish girls. We miss you on SPL. Yeah, yeah can we get SPL you on SPL, TJ? You. Only speaking Gaelic now. <laughs> TJ on SPL. You can you can speak Gaelic. Like yeah, no, we should. should probably uh, you know, a lot of viewers would appreciate that, right? Yeah. No, we should all grow grow some sauce to Johannes and so we'll go berle, Dini, go hunt or fad. As uh, I'm bent, uh, ten of us and uh, an uber. Yep. What did <laughs> translate? Translate really slow. Wait, wait, that's what cool. What do we got now? Oh, that's so what's cool. going on here? I'm just going to squeal and shouldn't run on. I think he oh. said that we haven't had a single tater tot on this cruise. <laughs> Then we're gonna we're gonna overshoot again now. Huh. 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 Hmm. Huh. Huh. No, I was. Uh, Adam, they're trying to correct you here. <laughs> <laughs> to your barrels. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sponsored by Tater Tot. Barrels. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love me some Tater Ingots. <laughs> <laughs> Ingot. <laughs> I'm still lamenting the uh, lack of Tater Barrels at uh, breakfast. <laughs> Me. But they replaced it with, uh, I don't know what we're going to call them, maize, maize dogs. I'm gonna shoot. Oh, those are I'm gonna so good. I'm going to shoot again. Are those good? I haven't tried one. Oh They're my incredible. God. Don't start. Mini corn dogs. <laughs> Drive, right. Mini corn dogs. Mini corn dogs. breakfast. It's my army. favorite thing. I can't comment on them. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I feel like the navigator in the car. Watch the road. Maze. M A I. You should know. M A I Z E. Oh. <laughs> Not Maze. No. M A. M A I E. Z A. -A. Why are we going so slow? Why are we going so slow? I don't know. You're corn. You're doing two. Oh God. Vertical velocity so much two point one. Right now, it's crazy. <laughs> We need to get to the seafloor before <laughs> 200 like minutes, please. Maze is sometimes confused with maze. <laughs> Ma maze According is to the dictionary. Oh my gosh. So but over here it got confused what? with mace, <laughs> which is like a, a concentrated spray. Yeah. Mace dogs. Mace dogs. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bring back the tater barrels. We don't like these mace dogs. <laughs> we didn't lose any weights off of here, right? No. <coughs> oh, we got version X of the slurp holder. Oh, see? Now, now it's it changes. Back up. I think we just don't have the hydraulic oomph. The beans. Yeah. Can you give us a pan down to the slurp holder again? That's interesting. You can see the slurp there in the uh, pilot cam as well. What if we reversed the slurp as a sort of jet? Uh, that that has been done for kind Just of excavating. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Wow. So we won't even have to move it for a snip and slurp. Yeah, yeah but you in. can't see it as good as you would hope. Oh, that's great. Sort of. Sort of great. Yeah. Semi great. Semi great. Mm -hmm. It's a trade off. It's only rev four. Give us ten more revs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if I give it any additional thrust we lose we lose our speed, like by a lot. That's weird. What do you think's going on? Powers reversed to the thrusters? No, it's like we're starved for hydraulic power. Why am I reading about corn? <laughs> <laughs> what did you find about what corn? What about there? Um, looking at the different kinds of corn. See how it drops, <laughs> it drops off like Wax crazy. Wax corn. Dent corn, flint corn. You know, uh, generally people, if you ask them, like, yeah. where's the best corn in the world? They're going to say where they're from. Mm -hmm. And it's because it, when as soon as you pick corn, the sugar content goes down, yeah. like, hour by hour. So wow. the fresher it is, the, like, better it tastes. Wow. Huh. Look at how much it changes. Like just a little bit of forward weight. That's odd. See, it just drops right in the dirt. Hmm. So probably should remind people that this area that we're exploring has been proposed as a marine oh, national right. sanctuary. Um. For everyone uh, tuning in or just tuned in, so what's really interesting about the region that we're exploring, it's actually being nominated or to potentially become a national marine sanctuary. So the data and information that we're collecting um, informs that process. So uh, Jules, can you expand more on the monument part of the sanctuary? Yeah, for sure. Um, so there is already a National Marine Sanctuary in this area. Monument. Um, monument. Oh, shoot. Yep. It's so hard. Uh, yeah, I get it. There's I a marine know. monument. There's a proposed sanctuary. It would add additional protections to the monument and would also um, extend through the, the US EEZ. Mm -hmm. um, so Sanctuaries really rely on um, 
individuals and grassroots organizations. It's more of a bottom up process and um, rather than marine monuments, which can be appointed, but also removed just as quickly. Um, so all of the data that we're collecting right now will inform these decisions and inform uh, conservation efforts. Um, and you also can get involved in this process. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you can comment. Uh, NOAA is open to public comment, so you can find a link on um, nautilus.org. Nautilus Live? Nautilus Live. Um, and you can also find a link on the NOAA Sanctuaries page. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah. So please head over to nautiluslive.org or the NOAA.gov uh, for more information. Your questions and your comments um, are essential to this process. So I believe they have to answer every question, correct? Yeah, yeah. they, they have to look over all look of the over comments. Up. Right, right. Um, our expected max depth is 2,400 meters for this dive and our dive duration is 24 hours. We're currently exploring an unnamed geo, geo one to three, north northwest of Kingsman Reef. We are still descending. Chat. Oh, yeah, we're still now. descending. We've got about 20 minutes to 20 the bottom minutes, if right. we continue at our current speed. <laughs> That's a yeah. big if. We're at roughly 2,000 meters. Wow. Let's go. Temperature, water temperature is 2.2 .2 degrees centigrade. Oxygen concentration is 92 micromoles per liter, uh, in case you were curious about that. So what does that tell our viewers? Um, Can't breathe down here. Yeah. Can't breathe. Simple. No breathing. Simple issue, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your breath. Oh, have you come across anything man-made yet? What's no, I don't think so. Not on no. this, on this expedition. About, yeah, I don't no. know about previous expeditions. Too, previous, so. yes. This one, no. Does it tell us the, oh, no, that's current that make it up versus for average? That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know what that's uh, informing us there. That's uh, unusual. Looking pretty blue. Shout out to everyone tuning in online. We have our friends from all over the United States, UK, Canada, Germany, Norway, Costa Rica, Netherlands, Finland, Spain, Denmark, the Czech Republic, Brazil, Barbados, and Australia. If you are just tuning in, and if you've missed our previous dives, uh, check out nautiluslive.org for our highlights. We'll be posting more highlights in the week to come. Uh, please, if you have any questions, send us in. Send us your questions in the chat.
and I don't think we don't get the weekend off here, right? We're still going to be diving. <laughs> that's a. That's an affirmative. Mm, I. No, I DK. <laughs> affirmative. <laughs> Science, twenty-four-seven. <laughs> it is pretty cool to be out here and just be focused on the task at hand, right. and, and you know our lives are so fractured uh, with <laughs> Zoom meetings and whatnot, you know, it's nice to just focus on diving and exploring. It's yeah, absolutely. Oh, from chat, have you guys ever found any geodes or fossils from your samples? Uh, we've found fossils. We found a fossilized megalodon tooth on a previous Ooh. cruise. Um, geodes, yeah, I mean, depends how how small you would consider something to be a geode. So these <sighs> igneous or volcanic rocks have little bubbles of formerly of gas, and those can infill with uh, crystals, but they're like maybe a millimeter in diameter, so probably not as exciting a geode as as you might see at a kind of like crystal store. Thank you. You know, with all the information that, and the data that we're collecting, will this, where, where does this data go? Will it eventually be made public? Yeah, absolutely. It, it all the data is made public. Um, the video data is uh, available on YouTube. And then eventually in in a more permanent archive, the National Center's Center for Environmental Information, um, all the bathymetry data that's collected uh, goes to a program called R to R, Rolling Deck to Repository, oh. and it ends up in the Marine uh, Geoscience Data System and also in NCEI. Um, if you go to the Nautilus Live website, you should be able to kind of read more about where the data ends up and, and how to get access to it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, these also contribute to guides, like the ones that we use right. to identify things um, in situ. Um, and then, of course, our, our samples are... Uh, you know, distributed to various organizations like the MCZ and URI. Yeah, MCZ is the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. Yep. URI is the University of Rhode Island. So the rock and sediment samples go to URI and the biological samples to the Harvard M MCZ. Yeah, and that's another place where data will be available. Um, and some more in-depth data on individual samples. Um, there, that includes like locality, uh, where it was collected, uh, coordinates if we have them, uh, identification, etc. Um, so that information is available to anyone on MCZ base, um, along with all of our other database specimens. Cool. Thank you. And for scientists on shore who have a specific uh, sampling desire, uh, you can you can become a scientist. And I went to an outdoor movie theater because it was COVID, and we watched Jaws. It was like one of the movies that they played, and I was like, okay, finally, I'm going to be able to finish the movie and see the end of it. But I didn't realize that Jaws took place in New England, so oh. I'm like, great, <laughs> I like, moved here. <laughs> Jaws is going to happen to me. <laughs> Um, I think we all forgot about Finding Nemo. Oh my gosh. Oh, Finding Nemo is so good. I never saw Finding Dory. Finding Dory oh, it's a good is one. like, it, I, the art is good. Okay. I remember oh, like the octopus. About, um, I remember watching this story about how they animated the octopus to make it so lifelike that it took them like six months to animate like 30 seconds or something like wow. that. Wow. Six months of work for 30 seconds of screen time. Yeah. <laughs>
but it looked really cool. Right. What about, um, what is it, shark tails? <gasps> oh, oh, wow. The one with uh, Look at this DC Angelina girl. Angelina Jolie oh, yeah. and yes. uh, Will Smith. So, um, <laughs> uh, nobody loved me when I was Where he, like, did. Tail. He, like, pretends to, yeah, to be somebody. To be, like, uh, okay, yeah. I don't even remember what happened. So it's, like, so. um... There's like a shark who's like a really nice shark and he doesn't, he's kind of like a vegetarian, yeah, like he right. doesn't like yeah. eat fish. And yeah. so Will Smith's character, he, they do this whole bit where like he kind of tames, the sh he's like a shark tamer and becomes really oh. famous off of that. But then all okay. the other like big sharks are like, you know, chaos ensues when a little tiny fish becomes friends with a big shark. That was a good movie. That's a good movie. Oh, what did you think of the second Avatar movie? I like that question. I didn't like in the second Avatar movie. I didn't but watch it. That when they're trying to learn how to swim, they just grab into one of the corals to st to keep oh. moving. And it looked like one of the corals back home that we're trying to restore. The but then right somebody we'll told play, me that that's we'll another planet. Well, how I, know can they, I know that it can be a coral, and that's very true. Maybe take some of that. They said what? Away. No. That it's Moana. another planet, so maybe it, it isn't a coral. Oh. oh. I That's a good didn't, point. I didn't see the second Avatar movie. I saw the first one. Me too. I didn't see the second one yet. I know the second one got a lot of hype, but I just... There's a second one? There's yeah. supposed to be like a second one, and a third, third one, and a fourth one, and I think even like a fifth one or something. What? The Titanic? Uh. The Titanic? Eh. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what movie did you say? Me? Yeah, what was the movie that has the uh, five? Oh, Avatar. <laughs> he said the Titanic, and I was like, what more is there? No, no, Avatar. Yeah, I said it. yeah, yeah. I've seen Avatar. I, I saw part of the most recent one. I don't know. It's like, eh. For everyone who's Find just tuning in, our dive expected max depth is 2,400 meters. We are currently exploring an unnamed the Gio, Gio 123, north northwest of Kingman Reef. What's interesting about this region is this region has been nominated to potentially become a national marine sanctuary. Um, so all the data that we're collecting will help inform that process. So your thoughts, your comments, or your questions are important. Um, check out nautiluslive.org um, and nautilus.gov, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys even posted like something where you can, right, like the website where you can give your opinions. Right. Yeah. Right. Because right now they're in the, pro I think it's like open to the public. Right. To it's open. Right. Thoughts. It's open to the public for questions. So please check that out. Yeah, and Noah has to read through Every, all of these right, comments. Right. Right. So. Put in your two cents. Did that happen? Um, should we go Cameron's into, I don't know, why like a marine sanctuary? Yeah, oh. okay. <laughs> so there's, there's already a, a monument in place. Uh, the proposed sanctuary wouldn't replace the monument, and it wouldn't expand the monument, but it would add additional protections, and it would also um, extend the entire uh, U.S. EEZ. Um, so sanctuaries are different from monuments. It wouldn't extend the U.S. EEZ. Huh? It wouldn't extend the U.S. EEZ. You can't extend the U.S. EEZ. No, the sanctuary would extend throughout. Oh, extend throughout the U.S. EEZ. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it would extend the U.S. EEZ. No, so no. Uh, it would. It would be throughout the U.S. EEZ is what I was trying to say. Um, but yeah, sanctuaries are sort of a top-down process, whereas uh, sanctuaries are bottom-up, so they're very grassroots. Uh, and so that's why it's especially important that you um, let people know what you think right. and um, support support the monument or sanctuary. Uh. <laughs> And then one of um, chat says, what do you think of the statement of 70% of sea hasn't been explored? Do you think it's misleading as a lot of ocean is just emptiness or do you think it has a valid point to it? 
I don't think a lot of the ocean is just emptiness. Yeah, me too. I um, agree. I mean, as you can see from uh, the the footage we've gotten just on the Nautilus, uh, there's life everywhere in right. the ocean. Uh, even like this blue footage, there is a ton of life mm -hmm. in, in just the the open ocean. Even so, um, yeah, yeah. The we know more about the moon than we know about, about our own ocean, the deep sea. About our own backyard, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And when I think about emptiness, it's like almost saying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And even take all the biology and geology out of the ocean, you still have this massive amount of water. And I'm not a physical or a chemical oceanographer, but there's a lot you can learn just from looking at water. Right. We can also learn about climate change from studying the ocean. Um, the ocean is a huge um, sink for carbon. Um, you know, we would be much worse off if that weren't the case. Yeah. The Earth's climate would be hotter, and we'd have a lot more CO2 if, if it weren't for the ocean. Yeah, we also have microscopic uh, phytoplankton, mm -hmm. like rain right. mats. Like, they're more responsible for the oxygen we breathe than trees. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a cool fact. But yeah, if I, right. It's like, yeah. isn't like 80% or something? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's phytoplankton. It's yeah. Give us 80% of the oxygen we consume. And not a lot of not a lot of um, the younger generation knows. So when I was when I teach back home and I and I tell them that, they're like, "What? No way, Miss! No, that's not true." Yeah. I was like, "No, really, think about it." You know, they're like, "What?" And then, yeah, all my classes are they're just baffled at the fact that the ocean provides more of our oxygen than trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the U.S. is more ocean than land. Right. Mm -hmm. So. A couple of reasons why it's, it's so important that we we keep exploring. Is there anything we're looking forward to seeing, or I'm looking forward to seeing some cool corals? Right. Yeah. Uh, I would always love to see any sort of octopus. Yeah, I was going to say cephalopods. Um, I like seeing some cool geologic features. I like seeing the biology too. I just don't know anything about it, so. <laughs> like the corals and stuff. But I'm getting better at IDing maybe like three different kinds of corals. <laughs> I, I think I have bamboo coral, aridogorgia. Other than that, you probably know plexorids. Mm. I'm learning a lot just the by yellow. So it's a jewel. The yellow one. <laughs> well, okay, because there will be like a yellow one, and then. Every time I'm like, oh, it's probably the one that Brian said before, and then he comes up with a new name, and I'm like, never mind. Yeah. I have no idea. Also, we don't have Plexaurus anymore. They corrected us in the chat numerous times. Oh, oh. because the, the the taxonomic. It's not Plexaurus anymore. Yeah, thing. it's it's now part of the family. And my pronunciation is going to be <laughs> interesting, but uh, Paramoricia this? So like I yeah. think um, Paramoricia is now, uh, so I believe it was previously Plexordae parasis, and now it's Paramoricidae paramoricis. Yeah, if that makes sense. So yep. Plexordae still exists as a family. Oh. Um. I don't know. I, right. I need to check with Lila, but she corrected me in the last time. Really? Yeah, okay. Because, like the, Maybe I'm wrong. The family Paramoricia has now uh, the Plexaris inside of it, so it doesn't exist anymore, or they have another name. Interesting. Uh, Steve, are you there? Help us. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> Steve, what's up with the Plexorids? Worms says it's still valid. Let me check the chat to see if they talk about it.
Okay, Jules, I don't know if this helps, but because I'm very confused too. Okay. But Asako uh, earlier in the chat said... Uh, oh, we just got a response from Steve. Oh, awesome. Uh, Plexorids exist and contain fewer genera than previously. Genera like Swiftia, Marusia, um, and maybe Thesea are still Plexorids. Thanks, okay. Steve. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so plexorids still exist, but some plexorids are being um, reclassified as like paramarusidae. Makes sense. Yeah. So far. Yeah. <laughs> again, when you're classifying them, but. Okay, yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure. You. I don't know all the changes myself, so I will be relying on folks like Steve <laughs> and Asako. <laughs> I'm not sure what the deal is with Parasys, actually. I was not fully following that explanation. <laughs> so does these changes in taxonomy usually come from genetic sampling or? Um, yes. That's very interesting. No, sorry, video. Yeah, things are changing all the time. There were recently a lot of changes to um, bamboo coral taxonomy. Um, I believe they now belong to a different uh, family order. <laughs> Go back to you on that. Okay. Yeah, and there's plenty of things that we found or just that exist that haven't been described. And so as we as we look at new species, um, yeah, we can make changes. Steve says, the changes are not arbitrary. As we develop new, better, deeper genetic sequencing methods, taxonomy becomes more clear So and less reliant on morphological features. So is like the changes in like the taxonomy, is that related to just having like the, just having better science and having more yeah. methods to do it than we did previously? Or is it also just a fact of now it kind of seems like more people are interested in researching the deep sea, so there's just more samples? Um, you know, it's not just corals and it's not just the deep sea as we're developing better sequencing methods, um, we can get more exact, I guess you could say. Um, so it turns out that a lot of corals are more similar than we previously thought. Mm -hmm. um, and things used to be classified morphologically, which is not as precise. Like